everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Catherine from Jane Catherine on Books. Now, I'm not going to do Friday short story reads this week because it's month end and I've just got so many things to talk about and catch up with. Uh, so, today I'm going to do uh, my Diversathon wrap up. And uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about the books that I ordered and have only just come, so unfortunately. I didn't get a chance to read those, but I will be doing over the next few weeks. And then I've the two books that I did read, I'm going to then wrap up for you. Okay, so let's get cracking. So, first one that I ordered, these are, uh, there was a problem with my order and uh, they've only just come. But this is what I was intending, coming out. This is by Stephen uh, Gain. Uh, this is a self-published book, I believe. <coughs> And this is the story of this young, a oh, beautiful, gorgeous looking little lad. Um, this young boy and how difficult it was um, growing up, not only being black, but also being gay and the difficulties uh, surrounding that. So I thought that would be uh, good to look at. The next one, I know there's been a lot of um, talk about trans, which uh, is doing the rounds on BookTube at the moment, and um, this is sort of on a on a par with that, I believe, and thought this would uh, be a change. If I was your girl, by Meredith Russo or Russo, um, I think this is a, a YA contemporary, but. Um, this again is about uh, looking at people with, with transgender and, and the difficulties of transitioning from one gender to another. Um, like everyone else, all she wants is to make friends and fit in. But Amanda is holding back, even from Grant, the guy she's falling in love with. Amanda has a secret. At her old school, she used to be called Andrew. So looking forward to, to getting through that. Um, and then along the same theme, I thought we'd look at uh, transgender from a different uh, viewpoint. This is I Promise Not To Tell by Cheryl Evans. And this is, is, his, his, is her memoir of um, having raising a transgender child. And uh, I've started reading a little bit of this. And it's really interesting to see the different viewpoints. Um, because everybody's owed their own part to play in this. Um, I think I, I may have mentioned before that uh, I'm very much interested to find out more different points of view to do with transgender. I was, I'd say, fortunate enough, really, to be involved in a case in my professional life as occupational health advisor um, to work with a um, transgender lady who had uh, well very bravely had, uh, had, had had surgery and changed her gender um in her 40s and uh, part of my role in in occupational health was to make sure there was a smooth transition there was support for her from actually going from working in the same environment that she'd worked in for 20 odd years and a very male dominated environment into uh, actually going back to work as female and also support following surgery. But it was just also not just supporting her, but it was supporting her colleagues because um, especially her manager had worked with her for 20 years as a male. Um, and so all about the support network for everyone. So it's something that's dear to my heart. I'm very interested in finding out more. And I think it's very interesting to see what this lady's got to say. Now, to the books that I did read. Um, I don't know if I'll get to the end of this without shedding a tear and suddenly get mascara all down my face. Uh, both these books were important heart-wrenching, every single emotion, human emotion uh, known to man comes to the surface and 
yeah, I, I actually, you know, cried in places. I do want to sort of give a little bit of an alert that these are quite disturbing in some ways. So for younger viewers, I'm just, uh, you know, giving the adults a bit of a heads up. I'm not going to go into too much detail, uh, but there may enough be enough here that you don't want young ears to listen to before you've checked it. So the first one was Lilac Girls. Now I had already started this because this was hashtag on the booktube shelf uh, read. Um, it's quite a chunky book so obviously it, it ran through into Diversathon and this, yes I do think it, it, it's reading diversely because I don't think reading diversely is just about the here and now. I personally believe that reading diversely is, is looking back into our own country's history, history of other countries and how people were perhaps persecuted, ill-treated, marginalised back in the day. So I think it's just as important. This, wow, you know, I, I gave this five stars. It's the story of three, three people during the Second World War. So we've got three narrators all looking at it from a different angle. Um, so we've got Caroline, who is from America, from a privileged background, um, and she starts off in the Second World War helping uh, refugees that are coming back over to America, um, you know, people that have been working in Europe and, and, and coming back, back home, and does quite a lot for the war effort, but to a certain extent was very much... Um, to start with at the beginning of the war, they, America was still in certain circles were carry, carrying on as normal, you know, in the elite circles where they're having parties and goodness knows what. Then we have got Herta, who is a young German female doctor, recently qualified, and in a way, in a way it feels like she was brainwashed to a certain extent that, you know, for the greater good of Germany, and it isn't untoward to... Um, rid rid ourselves or the country of you know marginalized groups although she was a young woman she had quite strong um purist views shall we say she goes to work in uh, ravensbrook prisoner of war camp in germany where many of the polish um polish ladies women were sent and she was part of many, for those of you who don't know, medical experiments, uh, surgery, etc. was carried out on um, a group of Polish ladies known as the Ravensbrück Rabbits. And so we have then the third girl, third narrator is Cassia, who was one of those ladies. Now, two of these are real people. So Caroline is... is a real person, it's her story. Uh, Herta, the German doctor, was real and subsequently was taken to trial for war crimes. And Cassia, although is a fictional character in this, um, she uh, really, her accounts were written from real life accounts from uh, people that were in Ravensbrück and what had had done to them. Um, a very important read I feel. Uh, quite harrowing at times. I couldn't read it straight off. I had to keep putting it down. Um, you can see with all the things in there that I've got all the thoughts and feelings on it. Well worth the read. And then finally we've got The Bone Sparrow which is Zana Freljon. Now it's a YA con um, but also every adult should read it too um, and it's very much in the current climate it was published the back end of last year in 2016 and although these are fictional characters they are taken from real life people they're taken from accounts of this particular refugee camp in Australia um, and I have to say never, well I can't say never, but for a long, long time have I read a book that just goes whoof and hits you right here. I cried, I laughed, I was outraged. Um, 
quite heartwarming actually as well um but disgusting in in how you know how people were treated and um we've got this young boy who was actually born in the prisoner of war camp never known any other life and he's been there nine years nine years and never got out but he's got this great imagination i'll just read you this and he used to imagine all sorts that he was in this camp he knew quite a lot about the outside world because he was there with his mother he was there with his elder sister and of course they knew life before and they had a good life before just the same as you and i um but he put i put the shell to my ear and listen again real hard i'm pretty sure i can hear just the whisper of my bar's voice in there that's his father he's waiting for him to come because he was captured and he thinks he put them on the boat to escape and they thought he was following on um my bar's calling out to me telling me he's on his way telling me that it's not much longer now because it's already been nine whole years and that's a long time to wait for my bar to come someday it whispers and the sound of the whisper is as brilliant as a thousand stars being born i don't tell anyone i hear him though not even ellie that's his sister um and it's a lovely story about friendships he makes a friendship with a, a young girl on the outside similar age to him and she's struggling too she's recently lost her mother and they help each other they help each other to come to terms with everything that's happening um but the treatment and how you know these people feel must be horrendous um and the bullying and the violence that goes on from um from the guards so i'll just read you this bit because i feel that it's 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 relevant so the bone sparrow is an imagined story however it is based on all too true reality while the characters, events and places described in The Bone Sparrow are fictitious, the policies which have put people like Subi and his family in detention are not. Conditions in detention centres and refugee camps are different all over the world. The conditions I have described in this book have been taken from reports of life in Australian detention centres. So, however, the treatment of refugees and people seeking asylum is a global issue. The UNHCR, the United Nations Refugee Agency, has called on all nations to stop treating asylum seekers like criminals. Across Australia, the UK, USA and Europe, asylum seekers and refugees are routinely detained, fingerprinting and in some places numbered. And apparently it's been, uh, since she wrote this book, she's saying that it's been passed as law that the true life accounts that are being smuggled out of these camps, it is it is unlawful in Australia to discuss them and print them. So, take of that what you will. I just want to read this little bit because, you know, without getting political, we're all sat here cosy and warm and these people have lived like you and I and this just brings it home to you what they've gone through to get here. I'm trying to see where it where it is because it's um, it's telling the tale of how his friend actually got here. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I'll have to read you this. Now see, he hops on his crutch over to his bed. He's only got one leg. He used to have a plastic one to go with his real one, but the jackets that is like the the security guards took that away when he got here and they never gave it him back. It's worse for people like Farah who is deaf and had her hearing aid taken so that now she can't hear the memories people tell each other to keep themselves alive in here. I don't know why they've put him on watch. Salim who used every bit of money he could to buy a boat to save his family because bombs kept falling from the sky and killing everyone he knew. He left his country with his whole family but arrived here on his own. He even paid extra because he was promised a good boat with a motor and a roof and life jackets to fit his little girls. But all he was given was a rubber boat with no life jackets and a promise that the seas were good and calm at this time of year. That promise wasn't any good either and he said that now he'd lost everything he couldn't see why he had to live anymore. So 
oh read it it's not all sad that you know there is some light at the end of the tunnel it is heartwarming and you know i think in this day and age if there's a people the likes of all of us can't stand up and try and make life better for all sorts of marginalized group seeing as it's diverse of fun then we should be doing but i'll just leave you with one thought the Lilac Girls, 1940s, Second World War, cruel treatment, people in concentration camps. The Bone Sparrow, 2016, 2017, people in concentration camps. Might be called a different world, but when you've read this, concentration camps. Makes you think of it, doesn't it? So thank you for watching. Um, hope you've all enjoyed Diversathon. I think uh, now it's made me realise I need to read more diversely. And um, yeah, I think sometimes it's now time for us all to uh, not just sit on the fence and get thinking about how we can help those less fortunate than ourselves. So sorry for those that we're looking forward to Friday Short Story Reads. I'll be back again next week. I'm going to start doing a review every week, I think, because I've just got so much coming up at the month end. I've got so many books still to do a video on for my net galley reviews. Uh, it's just probably all too much. So thank you for joining me. See you again next time. Bye.